So what's interesting to see what's happening is we're evolving our ideas of what it means to operate in space. You start with the shuttle program, and it's driven by the types of missions we've been doing, right? You start with the shuttle, the shuttle's up there for a finite amount of time. You have, as I mentioned before, a lot to do in a finite amount of time. That means you need to plan that excruciatingly carefully to make sure you get everything done. And so shuttle timelines are by the very nature of the, the, the mission, very time constrained and very well segmented to get to know that we can get everything done while you're there. And that makes perfectly good sense for that kind of mission. Now we go to the space station. The space station goes on forever. You know, I knew on the station that if I didn't get done today, I was gonna be there next week or the week after that or the week after that. And so that whole idea that every five minutes is precious is not so strong. I mean, it is precious, but not in the sense that I can't get my task done. So on station, what goes into planning the day for the crew? Well, think about what goes into planning the day for the crew. And this goes back to how the station was designed and who has insight into what's going on. There's a group of people that gets together to plan what should happen in an increment and then in a month and then in a week and then day. And they, they figure this all out. And they have to balance the power usage, the comm usage, um, where is the, the telemetry stream coming from and do you have the right satellites, uh, cooling load on the cooling system, you know, any kind of vibration or, or guidance or, or motion on the system that might upset a science experiment. There's a huge number of parameters into, uh, that play into how you schedule a crew day. That's beyond just what's the crew member flow. It's all of this other stuff as a crew member, I have no insight into, right? I have no idea that if I turn on the combustion integrated rack today, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna use another two kilowatts of power that we don't have because all these other science experiments are going. So that all goes in to the planning of a crew day. And as a crew member, all I see is, you know, blue box, I must do this task in this time frame without necessarily knowing why. So there's some constraints that goes into to building a crew schedule on station. But inside those constraints, there's a lot of freedom for the crew. And I used to move my schedule around all the time because I knew how I could work more efficiently. But if I saw a blue box, I'm like, I can't move that. That has to be done at that particular time, or these tasks have to be in a certain order. You know, so there's certain cues that we've built into the crew scheduling now that as a crew member, I know I have to do this here or I have to do one before two. And inside those constraints, I can move my schedule around. And that's great because I could probably figure out how to work more efficiently on orbit than a bunch of people sitting on the ground trying to anticipate my days. But I couldn't move everything because I don't have insight into why those constraints were there. So if you go back to the idea of how you're designing a vehicle to go far away and, and how you might use the crew to schedule their time, they maybe need some insight into those kinds of things. You know, and because again, if you're trying to build a vehicle where the crew's doing the tactical and the ground's doing the strategic, perhaps you can design a scenario where you give the crew, okay, this week we have to get these things done. Here's a couple constraints you need to know about. And then the crew can plan the whole week. And you don't send the crew a daily schedule when you're going to Mars. You send them, but this week we have to get this done. During this month, we have to get this done and let them plan that and send them the constraints. But you have to build a vehicle that's not so over-constrained that that flexibility doesn't exist. And then you, again, you move the tactical to the crew and you move the strategic to the ground. Because there's a certain amount of psychology involved in being able to control your own life a bit. And again, we're all type A in people. You're never going to get out of people flying in space not being type A. That just goes with the territory, right? So you, there's a certain amount of control that you want to feel that you have. And on station, you can get that if you choose to by moving around these blue boxes and these orderly events. But, but for a crew that's going far away to Mars, first of all, you've got to give them something to do. They, they have to have something useful to do. You can't just say exercise and hang out while you're going to Mars. They've got to give, and if they have, if they're engaged with the helping to define that what that is and they're engaged in controlling their schedule, it's gonna be psychologically a better environment, but you've got to build the systems that support that kind of approach.